I thought I'd put this together because a few years ago when I was making a demonstration or a shootout of various soft synths that emulate Oberheim synthesizers, I put this track together because it uses Oberheims and while I was doing it I obviously recreated those sort of classic 80s Prince drums. But to get those drum sounds, I wondered what would Prince have had access to back in the sort of mid 80s. And listen to the sounds, I think it would definitely have been using the Eventide H910 and the, and, the, and the flanger, or a flanger at least, but as the Eventides were the sort of top of the range stuff back then, as they still are now, I thought um, this would be the best way of trying to recreate it sort of first place to start really. So even tied, we've got this Clockworks bundle out at the minute. It's $299 for over a thousand dollars worth of plugins. And what do you get? You get the Instant Phaser that was released in 1971. I think that was the first studio phaser apparently. Then the Omnipressor you get, which is a really, really amazing compressor. Then the Harmonizers the H910 and the H949, plus you get a, a stereo version of that. They've got the instant flanger, which is what I use on this. In fact, use the flanger and the H949 and the stereo room on the SP2016 as well. So I <laughs> use nearly all of it, which is why I thought, as they've brought this out, maybe it would be interesting to see what you can do with it. I have to sort of fess up really here that I've got Lind drum samples all over the place. I got a bit obsessed by making sure I had every single drum sample from every single classic drum machine a few years ago. And I've got Lind drum samples from Wave Alchemy, their Transistor Revolution, that's pretty good, and their Evolution or Revolution, I think it's called as well. Samples from Mars have got them. There's loads of free stuff, and I think I've got various things on with Tempest and stuff like that. So I'm not exactly sure where I got all these samples from but what I'll do is I'll put them all on the Patreon page I'll just sample them dry and sample them with effects and you can have a play around and if you've got the Eventide Clockworks bundle or you've got some of these effects already you can you can have a play with that I'll upload the Logic Project as well so I've got the dry samples here and I've got the drums with the effects here and I'll upload as I say all of this to my Patreon page so if you want to join me over there, you can get access to all these samples and how I'll put it all together. So let's listen to the drums on their own. Just mute the synths. So I think that's pretty close. It's not going to be identical, obviously, you know, Go through various preamps on various desks and tiny bits of distortion, not quite getting the EQ right, or the reverb settings not being exactly identical. You know, it's a route to madness, but. I think that's pretty good, actually, even if I say so myself. So let's have a listen to what I did there. Let's just take the effects off for now. Let's go into the mixer, and we can see here. I've just used the Eventide effects plus um, a gate from Logic. So this is it without the effects. And this is it with the effects. So let's go through each of these drum sounds one at a time and I'll show you what I did. We'll start off with the kick, just solo the kick. And on this I've got the SP2016, I've used their EQ45 as well, and the Omnipressor, and Logic's gate as well, just to gate that reverb. So let's turn each off and start to listen to what they all do. So let's put the reverb on. I've used here the Stereo Room Vintage, because we have on this, we've got the Vintage and the Modern version, so I've used the Vintage one, because this was released in 1981, I think. 
the track was from Purple Rain, was that 1983, something like that? And I've made it nice and dark. I've pulled up the low frequencies over 200 hertz and I've pulled down anything over 2.5 kilohertz. Keep it nice and dark. It's quite short, but to get that big reverb sound, I've stuck it through the Omnipressor. And you can hear all those little crackles in there, and that's your vintage reverb for you. Makes a huge difference, that Omnipressor. Pretty special. I've also put some EQ on that. And that was really just me trying to match it to the original track. So although I've made the reverb darker, I've actually pulled out a couple of peaks. One at 500 hertz and one at about 3.8 kilohertz as well, just to give it a little bit more definition. just punches through a mix a bit better. And then I've added this gate, and this is Logic's gate. I know Prince used gates all over the place, so don't feel so bad using a gate on it as well. And that gives it a nice clarity. It cuts off the end of that reverb, and again, sits in the mix better, and it gives it that sort of classic 80s gated reverb sound. So take the effects off. So from standard kick to Prince kick. Okay, next up, we'll do the rim shots. Now these are the ones that really, really use the most of these even tide effects. Let's turn the kick off. And that's that classic Prince flange sound, isn't it? So let's see how we've made that. So these rims on this channel here, I'll go through bus three. That's this channel here, and this has got a fair few things on it. And I thought it sounds like it's pitching down. So it's a, a Lindrum rim shot. I don't know what, again, I don't know exactly where it's from. I can't remember, but it's pitched down, I remember. And you could pitch stuff down on the Lindrum, so that's fine. Let's take all the effects off. And the reverb off. So very standard sort of rim shot low pitched but then i thought it's getting pitched down and it's going through a flanger so to get it pitching down i've used the harmonizer so i've got feedback and manual and manuals sort of i suppose it's like it's pitching up or is it pitching down and feedbacks the feedback and how much it's going to pitch up or down so if i start playing this and just sort of show you how it works so pitching down there, but every time you play it, it plays slightly differently. And if you listen to Prince's tracks, every time it plays one of the rims or the snares or whatever's going through these effects, it does the same. Does the same as in it does it differently every time. Okay, so what I've got, probably a bit too much feedback on that. There you go. So you can hear it sort of pitches down if I turn this up. And you've got to balance between this knob here and the amount of feedback. So the lower I go on there, the more feedback I need. So it's playing around with that. And each of his tracks, he might have slightly different settings on. But this was on about 0.9, the manual, wasn't it? Let's put it back there again. Okay, so that's effect one. But then that goes through a flanger. Let's bring the flanger up. And there we go, we're getting there. If we take the H910 off, it's not right. You need that pitch down. And that's sounding very much like that Prince effect. Put the reverb on that. There we go. And this bus here, bus two, that I've got it sent to here, is sending it to an extra auxiliary track. And it's set up a bit strange, this mixer in this, because I tried hundreds of different ways before I got to this, really. I was just trying all sorts of different drum sounds, putting various things through various effects. And settled on this. So I've used the H949 dual harmonizer, and I've used this essentially as a delay unit. So 
So if we turn this down, have this channel as a separate channel on the desk because I've put some automation on, and that was to get the intro to the track exactly the same as the Prince track, or well, as, as close as I could get it to the Prince track anyway. And the first delay sounds a little bit less than the second, so I've been tweaking that. Take the automation off. Delay, and then no delay. A little bit too much delay though, there's a little bit too much feedback on there, but you need a fair bit of feedback to hear the second delay. So I've added the gate again. And again, a little bit of EQ. Taking some of the low end out. I think that's pretty close. Put the kick back in. So yeah, not bad, I think. So let's move over to the next main sound, which I suppose is the snare. And I've got all these going through battery, is it? So they're all coming out of various different outputs. So let's turn the others off. And let's just listen to the snare. And again, we can see here the snare is just going through the vintage stereo room. But with a lot more high frequencies in this. Nice and clean and crisp. And I think that snare's pitched down again. Could maybe do with being pitched down a slightly bit more, but we're getting there, aren't we? Let's bring in those rim shots again with the kick. Up here, we've got a crash. And that's just a Lin crash again. Prince did use the Lindrum, so I don't feel so bad about just using all Lindrum samples. Grainy and gritty, that. I like that low end on that. No effects whatsoever on that crash. It's just coming out of this one here, and that's going nowhere. Next up, we've got the little shaker. And that is just a shaker on its own, no effects again. Nothing to write home about there. And then we have the toms. So we've got a fair few toms going on in here. I've got sort of conga. And then those two sort of dirty sounding toms. And they do sound like a little bit distorted and I can't remember if I distorted them myself with something, but I will leave the samples, as I said, on my Patreon page so you can get them there. And they're not going through anything either. They're just as they are. But as I say, I may well have added some distortion myself. It was a couple of years ago. And I'm sure I remember adding the conga because it just sounded like there was something else in there. Without it, it didn't sound quite right. So let's listen to all that together. And then you can see here I've done this extra toms and I'm pretty sure he didn't just use the drum machine but the drummer played along so I've added some additional toms on top of that. It just sounded a bit richer, a bit fuller with these in there as well. And if we look at these, again, I'm not sure where they're from. I think these might be Lindrum again, but let's listen to them. So if we bring them in with these, let's turn everything else off. And looking on the mixer, these are going through bus two and bus three as well. Bus three is the harmonizer and stuff, but it's very, very slightly through there and a little bit additional through the reverb, because three goes through the reverb, but I've put some of that through the reverb as well, just for a little touch more reverb. And that was just me trying to fit it in the mix and make it sound right. Very subtle, but as I was tweaking, it seemed to, seemed to work and seemed to all fit together. Let's try it again with the synths. And just before I do, it's worth noting that I'm using the Omnipressor as a master compressor.
I know I'm not matching the levels there, but it does give it a certain something. So yeah, I think that works really well. As I say, I'll put this on my Patreon page with the Logic Project as well. It's got all the MIDI lines for the synths. If you haven't got the same synths, you can have a play around with it anyway. So I hope you enjoyed that. It was uh, quite good fun to revisit something I did a couple of years ago, but plenty of people have asked me to show how it was done. So hopefully with the Eventide Clockworks bundle coming out, it's of some use to somebody somewhere. Anyway, I don't know about you, but I'm really in the mood to go much purple rain. It's got me all nostalgic for a bit of his purple worshipfulness. So if you liked it, hit subscribe and ring that bell. And obviously pop over to my Patreon page to support the channel and to have a look at how I made this in more detail and have a look at those samples. And I'll see you next time.